Peace and blessings. This is Lisa Marie Goodson of the Blackberry Beauty Transformative Academy, Ancient African Wisdom for the Modern Sister. So y'all let me do as I do every night. Let me share this to the page. So hold on one sec. Here we go. So hey, Crystal Girl. So let's see. Let me just do what I do more change required live okay I spell required wrong uh, I just do it over okay all right hey ladies so peace and blessings. Hey, Crystal Girl. Hey, Yo Brown. How are you, Audrey? How are you, Boo? How are you, Asia? So we are going to get into it. So I'm just going to give people a few minutes to come on, and then we will get to work. So <laughs> I say work because that's what it is. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm excited. So we have, I don't know, you know what, yo, we don't have a lot of days. And for y'all that's on now, hey, Yo Brown, how are you? Happy holidays. For those that's on right now, just want to make sure that I remind you that midnight tonight, um, a lot of my products that's, uh, that's currently on my website now is going on major discount sale. It's my end of the year sale, so a lot of stuff you may never see again. You might see again. Either way, the prices are going to be incredible. It's from midnight tonight to midnight tomorrow night, and so it's a Christmas uh, kind of, it's, a, it's my gift to you. It's my gift to you, and uh, just to close out a magnificent year. The year has been full of surprises, and today we're going to talk about this idea of, I, it's interesting because I said that this year, it was full of surprises. And so tonight we're going to actually talk about that. Is your life a, a, a series of good luck? Is your life really a series of surprises? Or can you direct your life in the way that you want it to go? Or is it not an either or? Is it a combination of both? So today we're going to talk about what more change is required to have what you want. And I want to give you examples because, see, we, we, I think there's levels of change. And with each level of change, there's certain things that you can get. And you have to, you get to decide how much change you want to have in order to have something. So everybody's changes will not be the same, nor should it be or has to be in order to be happy. Hey, Denise, think about it. All of us don't want the same things. So what makes me excited and happy may require a different change, a different amount of change, a different, a different kind of change than what makes you happy. Let's keep this in mind because this is going to really... Uh, help us tonight to talk about this idea is more change required if you're not seeing what you want you want something but you don't see it or is a different way of looking at change or is change an individual thing and according to the person uh it, 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 it will dictate how much change that person has to go through so we're going to talk about that today jackie says hello everyone just got home not too long ago happy holidays happy holidays Hi. Hey, Latoya Wilson. How are you, Penny? Hey, how are you, Penny? Hey, Laverne. Thank you for joining us tonight. So people are coming on, and today we are talking about this more change is required. And I'm going to break down to you what I think uh, change is because I realize that even me, we say these words and we expect them to mean the same thing to everybody. And change for me may be different from change for you. I think that's why when, we, when we're seeking health or help or advice or guidance, we have to understand what we need and understand that not one person, no one person has everything you need. That, that, that need comes from different places because you are different. You're, as much as we can relate to each other, you still have your own individual challenges. You still have your own individual circumstances. You still have your own individual needs. And so in order for us to really get our needs met, we got to know what we need, not what somebody else needs. 
And I think that that's the thing, you know, we get caught up. It's almost like we say things and we assume that everybody else wants those things, like I said before, and everybody does not. So let's talk about that tonight. So Latoya says, hello, hey. Jackie said, had a great time with the family. Oh, I'm so glad, that's a blessing. I'm so glad. So Stacy Destiny has joined. I'm gonna give people a little more chance. So remember y'all, midnight tonight, all everything on the website or a lot of the things on the website will be on special as a matter of fact when i get off this live stream tonight i'm going to actually um go into the website and you know make that those big surprises when you wake up in the morning so crystal good girl says my book spicy tasty vegan oh and eating healthy for the seasons yay just came in 2017 is going to be an amazing year i feel it yes it will uh jackie says lisa marie wanted to let you know that the father sent me my theme for 2017, wow, all this wonderful and good news. This is really a blessing, wonderful, Jackie, blessings for that. And I know exactly what you're talking about, something, I, I think one of the earlier videos I did, maybe a couple of months ago, and I asked what was our theme, and mine was like polished or being more, polishing up my act. That was my thing. And so to have the here that you have yours is such a blessing, and it came so quickly. In the nick of time, Stacy Destiny, how are you? Good night, sweetie. Jackie says it came to me, believe it or not, when I was watching for Scrooge. Oh, for the 300th time. That's right. You never know how things are going to come for you, or to you. So, so what a blessing. So, so yes, y'all, we are winding down on the nights. Tomorrow is the 25th, and after that, what well, I've the last my last day is the 31st. And remember, tomorrow, if I do join you, I'll be joining you just for a few minutes during the day to just check in. Tomorrow is Christmas, so we are all going to take that time to reflect and to give thanks on what we have. And so tonight, I want to talk about this idea of change. You know, I realized something for me. I realized that I'm very much into change. And I used to always think that that was some noble you know, endeavor that I could do that, that I could change and I could change, but not only could I change, I could stick to something. I was always so proud of the things I could do. 21 day fasting, 60 day liquid fasting, raw foods for seven years. You know, all these, these things that being a vegan vegetarian for over 20 something years, all these things that I thought was something to be proud of or something that other people couldn't do or something that was in a sense better than somebody else was doing and then you wake up one day and you realize that it doesn't have to be that extreme but a lot of times what's when you say you want change some of us we don't know it's coming anyway we don't know how to move with the with the seasons and don't get me wrong there is effort that is required to actually change because there's something that I realize and I'm thinking about and I want to share it with you. Hey, Yvette, Jackie says, that's great, Crystal. Glad you reminded me. I want, want the spicy, tasty vegan, too. I'm also going to the vegan restaurant Yvette told me about. It's close to by. Oh, that's what, close by. That's wonderful. Yvette says, greetings. Greetings, Yvette. So, Yvette, we're just getting started. We're talking about change. It's different change required for different people, depending on what each person wants. Is change just the, is, is change the same for everyone? You know, is the same amount of change required for everyone? And I think the answer is no. And I'll tell you why. Crystal says, oh, awesome sauce, Miss Jackie. Please let us queens know how the vegan restaurant goes. Yes. So, so this is what I was thinking. I was thinking about how we have to not push so hard. At times, <laughs> that's all I can say. Let me let me break it down slow. We have to not push so hard at times. There really is a time for everything: a time to live, a time to die, a lot, a time to love, a time to not love, a time to you know eat, a time of uh, famine, a time. There really is a time for everything. And there's a time to create your dreams. There's a time to push during a process. It's like giving birth. And if you've never given birth, maybe I could paint a little picture for you. Throughout the entire birthing process, when I say giving birth, I'm talking about the moment you find out you're pregnant, that's one feeling. As you grow and go into each trimester, there's another feeling that comes. And different things are required for that time. 
you start to have to start having your, you start having back aches because you're not you know you're kind of out of balance your feet swell so you got to take something for that sometimes you have headaches so you got to take something for that I mean there's always something the process something different is needed for each one as you get closer sometimes they want you to rest more sometimes you have to get more sleep sometimes you find yourself wanting to eat all the time some some trimesters you find yourself not so this is very important that we understand that there's a different kind of effort required for each stage of birthing. And even when you get into the labor part, where you're now you're, 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 you're ready to give birth, and you're opening up, but you're not quite, this is when you're required to do more. This is Then they tell you, okay, you're getting close, so now it's time to push. Now this is when you're required to do even more than you did from the first day you found out you was pregnant. Each phase requires some different level of commitment, some different level of change. And understanding that, I think, will help us understand how to get what we want, you want, she wants, he wants, as individuals, because we're also we're also different. And so I was thinking about how, if you all remember, I was really going hard on exercise. I was getting up, running the rain, the snow, the sleet. You know, I'm extreme, but I'm no, I'm not extreme. I'm working on balancing my life. I'm working on enjoying it now. But I also understand that kind of pushing at a certain time in life. So now stay with me, y'all, because I'm going, I'm going to get you into another level of thinking, as I hope that I always do. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Kai. How are you? So I, so remember, I got into the, the push-ups, the, the, uh, the weightlifting, what was I was running, doing lunges, all this stuff. But remember what was going on that time. My husband and I were ready to move. At that point, we had packed everything, even though we did not have a place to go or did not have a place yet uh, uh, secured. We didn't know exactly where. We didn't know what city. We didn't know if it was going to be this place. We didn't know what this place even looked like before we got here. We knew, I mean, we visited this area and we got to see it. And I even saw somebody else's place, the apartment that lived here. But I didn't know, we didn't know if, what this apartment looked like. And, I, and so, but we were calm. We did the visualization because that's what was required at a certain point during our manifestation of this land and also even of the place we're living now. And then we actually did some meditations and then we would talk about it. This was all that was required at the time in order to get what we want. But we were just going step by step. When I started doing all that heavy workout and all that pushing, it was almost like the, the part of now you're in labor and delivery. And the only thing stopping this baby from being birthed or born is you pushing and pushing hard. It's almost like that last push that a, a runner, a marathon runner runs. And that last lap when they're getting closer to the finish line, there's a different kind of push that's required to get you over the finish line. There's a different kind of push that's required to actually give birth to those children. And I believe that that working out portion was me knowing that I needed to stay focused even more and there was more effort required to get what we wanted and we did and my husband worked out. I mean, it was some kind of magic, but it was temporary. Everything I've ever done, like I said, all the fasting, all the enemas, all the colonics, all the raw foods, all the vegans, all the hot springs, all the saunas, all the, I could just go, I can't even, so much that I've done in almost 50 years in the holistic field. And I, and I realized is sometimes something is required and sometimes something different is required. And if we don't get the lessons and we don't know to learn the Blackberry beauty secrets, if we don't know how to use what we need when we need it. Most of us are so out of season, we're even out of season in our growth patterns. We're out of season when it comes to change. We don't know how to change because we're trying to change or we're using techniques that don't need to be used at certain points in the changing process. Sometimes you gotta yield, sometimes you gotta push, sometimes you gotta be quiet, sometimes you gotta talk a lot. Sometimes you gotta get your point across. Sometimes you gotta be humble. It's, 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 but it's, it's so important. It's like this natural process of life that most of us don't feel is a natural process for ourselves. We just go, 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 or we do nothing at all. 
And so I really want to get you into knowing and understanding timing and time so that you're not working against it or you don't feel it's working against you. You're working with it. Very important. Very important. Kai says, hi, Lisa. I love all your transitions. Oh, thank you, baby. Stacy says, that's true. Thank you. Time, me for, time for everything. And you know what? And I'm glad you said transitions because transitions is very important to me. Like, I, 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 I'm glad that you all appreciate my transitions and uh, even my transformations. But sometimes when I look back, I go, I wish I got that lesson earlier. I wish I knew that before. You know, I wish I understood. So let's talk about timing, but let's stay on this idea of energy. Remember last night we've been talking about energy. We talked about the solstice energy because I really want you all to get this. I'm, I, I know that all of those things, or no, see, I believe I already had the sixth sense. You do too. I already had the intuitive nudging, but I'm, I'm assuming that all that helped me. I know that it did. And because of it, I'm very sensitive to energy, but all of you are. And so, so sensitive that the moment I leave one place or one location and go to a completely different one, I feel the energy of that place and I become very involved in it and it becomes very involved in me. And I want you to, that's, that's natural. If you're going to different places, but you still feel the same, have the same thoughts, the same ideas, the same dreams, then something deep inside of you needs to be recalibrated. Because the places you go should affect you in such a way it should bring forth change. I've, now that, I've always been. When I separate, when I start looking at who was Lisa Marie before she became Nubia I, who was Lisa Marie? before she moved to Oakland, California. Who was Lisa Marie? She's a lot like this person, Lisa Marie, now. We're talking about energy. If you notice when I, 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 my name is Lisa Marie and my energy is more like a normal human being, <laughs> not an extremist, you know? To me, my energy is understanding. There's a, there's a knowingness in who you are and who you were meant to be, and, the, and the, even in the name that you were given. Not to say you shouldn't change your name, not to say that name changes are important because you're going through something different and you want to express that on some external level. In a lot of ways, maybe your name feels external to other people. They can see you as a certain way. When I told you I let go of that name, I know you was like, no, no, but I'm telling you, I'm, that was Nubia I in Oakland, California, who was very strict to the point that it was, it took me out of and away from my people, my family in a lot of ways, because they, they, they loved me, I loved them, but that food and being so concerned about it, it takes away from lots of possible moments that could have been had. So why don't you want to be not strict, or I'm not going to use that word, obsessed, or not, and I, I'm, I'm going to say obsessed. If you're so obsessed in doing something that you don't see another way, then that might be not a great place for you to be. If you're so obsessed with eating a certain way or so obsessed with living a certain way or so obsessed with going to certain places, you miss out on all the other possibilities. There cannot be one way because the one way is the all. That's the only way. The one way, if there is, everybody's got so many different ways to get to the same thing. So there can't be one way, not just one way. And anytime you see yourself getting into the one way, hey, Vivian, and thinking about the one way and trying to stick to the one way, because, and I know why we do it, because many of us say to ourselves, but then it means if I don't stick with something, then people think that I'm flaky. People think that I'm not serious. People don't take me seriously. What I'm saying to you is, are you sticking with nonsense? Are you sticking with things that just don't resonate with you anymore? Are you sticking with things that don't make sense? See, that's not noble. That's, that's, that can destroy you. So I know a lot of us don't want to give something up because either people know us for that or people 
or, or we've made our money off that, or people, or, or you're just afraid because everybody, when you're doing something different, sometimes some people don't want to stand out. They don't want to be that one, that odd man out. And so for me, when I learn something, this evolutionary process takes me into another phase. But a lot of times the phase, the, 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 the stuff that takes you into the other phase is happening and you don't know what it's going to equal. Let me give you an example of what I mean. I changed my name months ago. I had no idea why exactly. All I did was listen to spirit. And I didn't change my name. I reclaimed my name. A lot of going back for 2016 for me, a lot of going back to Lisa Marie, a lot of going back to the living on the East Coast, a lot of going back to living where my grandmother was born, a lot of going back to move forward. That's when you know you don't know. So stop identifying yourself as who you think you are right now. Matter of fact, you might not be it at all. And the difficulty of getting that divine purpose is coming from the fact that you won't just let go of something. It could be good. It could have been right for years. It ain't right no more. It don't work. And maybe it never did. You just didn't want to see it. <clears throat> hey, Jen Sadiq, how are you? Maybe you never wanted to see it. And so I'm, I'm changing. I'm rearranging, but I'm willing I'm willing, this is a very important word, talk about the, uh, Louise Hay of the book, You Can Heal Your Life. She says, all you have to do is be willing to change and change has occurred. See, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to be wrong. I'm willing to not know. I'm willing to go through changes that I've never been through before. I'm willing to do the work, but I'm also willing to yield. I'm willing to take a back seat. I'm willing to know that I don't know. I need that balance. I desire balance in everything that I do. And then it won't be so hard getting what you want. Because if you focus on what you need to do, like Oprah always talks about, is the very next step. Maybe that's all that's required. What I realize is, was it required that I was so strict for seven years on raw foods on some, on some deep you know, existential level, <laughs> on some deep spiritual level, absolutely, apparently, because it wouldn't have happened. You know, everything I've learned, I was thinking about the way we heal, and I, what I teach in the next January in, uh, training course, Blackberry Beauty Secrets, it's a training course. What I really want to teach is when this training course is over, Jackie or Crystal or Jen, they will know what to do forever. I want to implant that wisdom that our grandmothers gave us. And for those that didn't have that experience or didn't grow up with their grandmother or didn't have that Southern experience or that Caribbean experience or that African experience or that love experience with another woman, I want to be able to give you those ancient African wisdom that you could go, oh my gosh, I, and only now I want you to know what it means when we say it. I want you to understand it and get it. I'm going to show you the ultimate balance. I want to create a workshop, a training course that makes every woman in it feel like I'm talking just to her, even though every woman in it wants something different. There is no one size fit all. There will never, ever be a one size fit all. We have to stop looking at life in that way. Whatever you're here to do, it's an expression of the way you do it. Yes. Is it a culmination of every single thing you ever learned? Absolutely. Cindy says, love that I'm willing to learn and do the work and make the changes needed. Absolutely. Hey, Barbara Jackson. Thank you for joining. Hey, Camila. Jackie says, thank you, girl. Pull, pull our coats. I say, Barbara Jackson says, hello. How are you, queen? Hey, Barb. So I'm so very excited about the new year because the new year for me brings me, I feel like I'm coming to you as I am. And I know you'll say, well, new year, but that's at least Marie. That's what we love about you. You always did. What I mean is I don't know. I know extremities are not African. I know that there's a time to be pushing, maybe not extreme, but obsessed when you want something to get it. 
but you got to smell the roses, sit down, be calm. I feel like the energy of women, especially the divine feminine, now I'm being very specific. Yvette says, yes, I was feeling my grand with me today while I was making, oh, yes, sweet potato pies. Oh, girl, that sounds so good. Red velvet, red velvet cake dressing, collard greens, et cetera. Yes, that's great wisdom. Thanks, sis. You're welcome. Girl, red velvet cake. Ah, I just fade to Jackie. Hey, Raymond Davis, how are you? Crystal girl, laugh out loud. Miss Jackie, yes, yeah, she, she know. So my, I'm really getting excited about the January training course because I know how I want to present it. I know what I want you to walk away with. I know a lot of you want so many things, so many different things. Some people want to be holistic practitioners. Some people want to do counseling work. I call it all the same. If you want to do coaches, mentoring, a lot of you want to go out and give what you have to others and, and of course, be compensated for it. You will anyway. It's just the confidence. It's not what you got. It's not even what you have to teach. It's your ability to be flexible in your teaching and to understand that everything you teach is because you're still learning it. And you want to learn it better. That's why you're teaching it. See, because what I always want for you, I never want you to think that you're burnt out. I never want you to think that we're next. I never want you to think that you don't have enough. There's a, there's a, there's a, a wellspring of, of knowledge and wisdom that lies within you, but I know how you get the knowledge and wisdom. You got to grow from the information that you receive. I'm going to say it again. You have to, we don't want, what if not, knowledge and wisdom come, came to me? Knowledge and wisdom comes to many of us. So we take this piece of knowledge and this isolated kind of information and we make it our God and our religion. See, what we got to understand is when we're reading an article, particularly an article about health, there may be 50 different people that's talking about 50 different aspects of health, whether it's aromatherapy, whether it's bath therapy, whether it's sea salts, whether it's yoga, whether it's tai chi. We can go on and on, right? The colonic colon therapy. And then, so, but you're one person. Now, let's look at this. So, so I can see, cause, so you can see where you might get messed up. You got 50 people writing 50 different blogs about 50 different aspects of healing. Now, one of those aspects, if you went deeply into them, could be enough. Two could be amazing. Three might be more than you need, but okay. But there's 50 different articles written by 50 different people talking about 50 different aspects of health. Let's, let's get this. 50 people, but you're one person and you're trying to incorporate all 50 remedies that actually might cancel each other out, might be hazardous if done together, but most of us approach holistic health in that very way. Do y'all hear me and be honest and understand? Sometimes, do you go to, do you read that article and say, cast oil packs? Then you read other article says, colonic, I gotta get that one else. Then you read other article says, yoga. Then you read other article that says, liquid diet for 60 days. Then you read another article that says, going out in nature. Do you know, do you? <laughs> 50 different people, but you're one. This is what I see, how we do our healing. We're obsessed. You know, I think about even the books that our scholars write. I think what Queen of Fuwa wrote the greatest, a great book, Heal Thy, I'm sorry, Sacred Woman. She's talking to many different women, black women, in many different parts and levels in their lives. But when we get the book, it feels like she's just talking to us. So there may be five or six things we could have used. There might be 10 or 11, just because my crazy behind <laughs> did it two, three, four times all the way through. That just tell you something wrong with it anyway. No, it's not wrong with it. But the idea of it that you're not doing something right because you're not going all in. Yes, I do that. That's right, Latoya says. Camille says, yes. Too much information, yes. Crystal says, love the book, Miss Lisa, yes. Wow, have you been following me, sis? <laughs> That's so me, says Cindy. All of us, because we get obsessed. And so I really, but it's not the Queen of Fools book. Say Woman is the most, it's a great book. Like, it changed my entire life. What I'm saying is she didn't put all that in there for you to do it all. She's putting all the knowledge and wisdom that she has so that anybody that reads it can get something out of it. But we take everything, not just, I mean, you could just name any book, any philosophy. 
we take it all because it looks like it's being presented as all. It looks like it's being presented as all to us. And we as healers, if we're not careful, we take it in so much that even if we wanted to change, we can't because everybody knows this way. And you don't never want to get caught up in that. Your healing is easier than you think. Is there training required? Only because we were never taught how to be natural. When we disconnected ourselves from the extended families, and then our extended families became less and less healthy, we lost something. I mean, maybe our elders, maybe some of our elders are unhealthy and eating all the wrong foods because they're alone. Maybe the family's not around anymore. See, I think food is a substitute for those missing parts of ourselves that's not being fulfilled. Those parts we don't even know, and because we don't know it, we don't know how to treat it. And so we treat, we use the same remedy we use on every part of ourselves to heal different parts of ourselves. It's that same thing I keep saying. If it's, you can't take it and make it a religion. You have to make it a way of life that works for you. So we can't adapt because I know we're very spiritual people, we're very religious people. So when we get health, we start to treat it crazily. And you're going to be sitting somewhere in the dark knowing you want a Haagen-Dazs ice cream, but you're scared because now you told people you, would, you don't eat dairy. And why, and why do I say that? I'm saying to you that you less want the dairy if you were able to give yourself that. It's a, it's a you have to, not even moderation, because I, I know that term. It's not just about moderation. It's about really knowing yourself. And really understanding that the self changes, that different things are required at different times. So you may see somebody that's going in all hard, and then you go try to do that same thing they do, but your dream is different than their dream. So what was required for them to get their dream, maybe going in hard, yours may be sitting back relaxing and chilling out and just visualizing it. Somebody else may be speaking the words or doing affirmations. That's why I'm teaching you all so that you can take what you need. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I know I got, I don't know how many women I got to add, check with my assistant, but I really feel like I can teach to each one without them even knowing I'm doing it and make it for them. Guy Retta Green just joined. Hi, Tia Jennings. Hey, Lotus Prosperous. Hey, Rachel Garman. Pink said, this message was needed. I say, it's too much. It's too much. I want to I, I wanna bring us back to those very simple ways of knowing. So I was thinking, I was thinking how, you know, <laughs> this, this is just, I'm so sorry. I'm laughing at myself. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, God, right now. Just on. I'm laughing at myself. So if y'all hear me laughing once in a while, if you don't laugh at yourself, then you're taking this life way too seriously because I was just a nut. I, absolutely not. So, uh, hey, God, just on. Great. Good medicine. Thank you. Exactly. You know, I remember like, you know, I used to do enemas, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't constipated. Like why, why was I doing enemas when you wasn't constipated? Like, see, this stuff don't make sense anymore to me. I was fasting, but I, I, I ate raw. So <laughs> I mean, but extreme, you know, I mean, it's almost like I was like working out, but I, I really had no weight problem. I mean, my, I probably was looking okay before I worked out. I mean, what I'm saying is people used to, and I talked about this last night, but I just want you to get it. Our ancestors used to take an enema when they needed it. Our ancestors would do a certain kind of therapy when they needed it. Castor oil, I took castor oil packs just because. I took uh, clay depositories because I read it in the book and it said it was good, but maybe I ain't had no all them problems. I don't know. It was just... I want us to know ourselves because then we could properly love ourselves. I'm going to say it again. If we know ourselves, we can properly love ourselves. And I think that if we stay as black women, closer to black women, teaching us about health and longevity, which is also encompasses all good marriages, good relationships, how to fix up our house beautifully, how to entertain. Like, it's time for us to live, y'all. 
you know, Jackie says, girls, sometimes we have to check ourselves. Exactly. They, that's why right. Cindy says, they told me to do lots of enemas while detoxing and healing fibroids. Now I understand that. I'm going to say, I think the enemas while detoxing and healing fibroids, that's absolutely right. And that's why I love the book, Sacred Woman. She's writing for the woman who is dealing with those kind of things. I'm telling you, I did that anyway. Like I was just into healing. Some people are fiends about it. I'm just be. I'm, I'm admitting I was one. Fiends about it. It's it's it, it's almost because we're and a lot of times even when you get healthy, so you got to find other ways to stay healthy. Because what I'm telling you is that's like medicine. You don't take medicine every day. If you take medicine every day, is it going to work for you when you're really sick? So you, you got to know what you're taking. Sometimes the remedy is to go out with your friends and laugh. Sometimes the remedy is to have dinner with somebody you love. So when you get well, but you're still living like you're sick, we got to be careful not to live like we're sick when we're well. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's a lifestyle for the sick. Those, those certain uh, therapies, fasting was for people who were dying. Raw foods were for recommend for people who were dying. Now, if you're dying, yes, I'm talking about there's some of us, at some point, you're going to get past the fibroids. You're not going to have them anymore. At some point, you're not going to be dying anymore. When do you start living? And I don't mean get, and people get scared, well, if I get off my diet, I ain't talking about, it shouldn't have been a diet. It's a way of life. And it's a balancing of it. I used to do it just because. I used to do it because I wanted to see. I wanted to be extra clean. I wanted to be extra clean. Somebody said colonic. I didn't feel like I needed one, but I wanted to be extra clean. You know, somebody said 60 days of liquid. I wanted to be extra clean. Do you think I might have been clean at 40? I'm just saying, do you think? Where is the line drawn? Because once we start doing that neurotic thing, we're not enjoying life anymore. You want to still keep your family closest to you. If you as a black person, with your, because of your diet or your so-called way of life, is isolated from your family, you might not like that. You might think that you're doing better and they're doing worse, but some of them is having more fun than you, laughing more than you having each other, kicking it with each other. You don't have to adapt their lifestyle, but you do have to have a life in this, in this, in this health and, and, and wellness, so to speak. Look at this word. Look at the words we use. Crystal says, got you. Thank you. Uh, look at these words we do. Preach, says Crystal. Obsession. Uh, these, like, healing. I'm healing. Do you hear that word? It means you're never healed. I'm healing right now. I'm going through my healing process. I want to heal. I'm healing. But you're, so you're still healing? You're still healing. You ain't healed yet. I'm in the process of healing. I'm a, healing means you're doing it. It's still going on. It means you're not healed. When do you become healed and what does that look like? That's what I'm teaching in the Blackberry Beauty Secrets, how to glow from head to toe. What does healing, what does a healed person look like? Forget the healing person. I want to talk to the healed person. When are you healed? And if the answer is never, that's a better answer than some day you think is going to come that ain't never coming. So now you got to stay on the strict regimen so you'll never be it, so you won't get that disease again. You didn't get that disease just because of the food. The food is what you picked up because there was some missing parts, some undeveloped parts, some sad parts of you. We got to stop acting like food is the cause of disease. No, disease is the cause of the foods that we eat. It's the disease that we get. It's the, it's the mental disease. It's the thought process. It's the pushing ourselves hard. It's the stress. It's the driving ourselves nuts, trying to be. We got to find some type of balance in this life. So I, when I invite you into the Blackberry Beauty Secret, I'm not inviting you into a place where we are stressed out about our healing. We will heal in the training course because we want to continue life. We want to live. We want to keep moving. We want to keep going. So we are healed. We're coming from a healed place. We're having different kind of healed conversations because it's the healed woman that's going to get the divine relationship, divine uh, f financial stability. It's the healed, not the healing. Stop healing and heal. Stop healing. 
So, whoo, yes, Jackie says, girl, we are in school today. I get a lot of time to think, and um, and I've been eating the cooked food today, so if my mind's supposed to go down, then, you know, and let me explain something else about this idea. We talk about this, and it's, okay, black folks, people, y'all know, again, I said it, we're talking about energy and time. There's a time for everything. We know that there's a time for everything. So if you're eating that 100% live food, and all of us have talked about that high energy, I said high, I want to say high ass energy, where you can't even come back down, is that normal? Unless you do some uppers, and you think, I never did nothing like that, but I could imagine the people that teach us this stuff, what they on. You have to come down. Who says down is a bad place to be? You didn't remember your great great grandmother, or your your somebody's grandmother that made the food, and by twelve o'clock the dinner was on the table, and at by two or three she was sitting there donning some socks, and by six seven she was getting ready to go to bed. She didn't need the energy. Most of us got all the energy, and nothing gets done. The energy is sufficient to get up early in the morning and do what you need to do from the morning to the time that the sun go down. That's smart. That's healed. How much energy do you need in a day? I mean, <laughs> when do you go to sleep? Because you need to sleep. Our elders slept. They didn't even have to take a nap because they woke up when the sun came up and they went to sleep at least they went down when the sun went down whether they read their bibles or whatever they read before they closed their eyes cindy says this is so dang awesome thank you cindy says stop healing and be healed already that's right got it yes Asia says thank you thank you thank you thank you queen almost as divine time and thank you so much or so chill that you don't have a pulse exactly anisha not anisha just joined thank you so we have to, so Jack says, you are so right. My mama got up with the, with the crows. Oh, yeah. It's the, and they did the most in a day. And they did things that counted. You know, we talk about all this way is, yes, Gareta says, yes. All this way we are is so unnatural. Okay, how about those that, we're going to be learning about this in the training course as well, that say, I don't like to do housework. I don't like to clean. But yet, you're the same person that will go to the gym three times a week. Do you understand how our elders stayed in good shape? I don't care what they, you thought they looked like, because we, we look different when we're in good shape. Do you understand that they did that by cleaning? You ever try to clean and, 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 and dust off all the baseboards in your home once a month? Do cleanings that was massive cleanings and, and, and talk about Persian, which was normal once a year, spring cleaning, it wasn't 15 times. Why are we constantly cleaning our house? Because we got to clear our heads. You ain't clear that in the early spring? One time. Do you understand that that was their exercise? We going crazy. We trying to get everything out there. But if we stayed in our homes so much, we would see the value of cleaning even just the fact that it's giving us natural exercise that, and, and something else is getting done. Remember, it's the in both. It's the multi-purpose. It's the mind of the African. I am so glad that I get to come out of that. I'm so glad that the energy moved me over here. Sometimes, too, y'all, why my next intensive, this is not the six-week training course, the three-hour moving up and moving out, why do I want you to buy that? It's on the website now. Why do I want you to be in that? Because I see something. You don't see it while you're there. And I know if people experience this. When you're living in a place, even though you know something's not right and you know there's something else you need to be doing and you know you want your dreams to come true, you're doing everything, but it's not happening. Sometimes the energy of that place where you are, it doesn't allow for the shift change. It doesn't allow for it. Every place really does have an energy. And if you are a spiritual woman, as many as all of you are that's watching, then you're, you're feeling that energy in that space. When I'm in California, it's the place of contemplation. I got to think about it. Let me meditate on it. Let me visualize it for a while. Now, I don't know. I need more time. 
And then you come on the East Coast. It's been there, done that. Let's get this done. Let's move that. Let's go over there. Let's do that. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I know from, but I talked about different change required at different times. For me, the change was to move. You want the land? You want to build a house? Get out of California, please. It's the same energy for you. It's the same people, the same things. Not wrong with the people, but it's not conducive to where I say I want to go. So I had to be willing to move. Yvette says, yes, that was my life for 18 years, for three months every year. No running water or indoor plumbing. My great mother did not play. That's right. Camila says, cleanliness is next to godliness. That's right. Evil spirits dwell in dirty places. Come on now. That's the truth. Garetta says, I have so many of these practices from my elders. I can't wait to implement my total food intake. I must take a class. Yay, I would love for you, Garetta. I'm, I'm inviting you in. Uh, get in touch with me. We need to talk. Uh, Roy and Royal just joined. That's right, guy. And I'm telling you, like, I, I, I know we know. And when, when we somebody brings it back to us the way we were raised, it was right. They wasn't perfect, but neither are we. But they wasn't obscene, insane. I say obscene, like obscene and insane, okay? <laughs> Woo! Hey, y'all. Uh, Cindy says, what took you to Cali from New York? Says, thank you. Jackie says, hey, Royal. So it was, but it was, again, it was divine. Um, I actually love New York. I thought that I was going to be a New Yorker for the rest of my life. So I don't have that story like, oh, I dreamt of California. No, I love New York. But it was spirit as always in my life that my, my job had went out of business and they gave us a year severance pay. My best friend's job was moving from Brooklyn to Vegas and I was in my 21, 22, I think. And I decided to go with her job. I had no job. I had money coming in every month. I was living with my mama. Never left my mama's house. At that point, we moved to Las Vegas. And when I went to Vegas, I met somebody in New York that said, if you ever come to close to Cali, visit. And when I went to Vegas and I visited Cali, I tell you this, and I, I'll tell you this for sure, I, I fell in love with California. And I'll tell you what I fell in love with. I remember it was December in California. And when I realized that this was the coldest it was going to get, because that's what I knew. I did not like the code of New York. And um, I wound up coming to California, and the person that, me and him, that we came together, he actually wanted to really move to New York, and I wanted to really stay here, so he moved to New York, and I stayed here. That was the creator. He was a Californian, and I was a New Yorker. Hey, Erica, so glad you're on tonight. So, but when I, when I get, I, I, I know that everything I was supposed to do here I've done. I know it was divine. I know it was divine. I know that I was supposed to delve that deeply. I know that that contemplation made me who I am today, able to sit in this chair in front of you. I know that deep reflecting. I know that deep visualization. What I'm saying is 99 years, like, <laughs> Well, I'm going to help some people. When am I going to do something with it? When am I going to move forward? Okay. Okay. And I just don't want you to be sitting for 99 years on a good thing. Even a good thing, you got to move on to the next good thing. Do y'all get that? Even the good thing. Matter of fact, it's the good thing that prevents you sometimes from moving. It's too good. Everybody high, you know, <laughs> smoking good California weed. I'm just saying, like, it's a whole nother place, y'all. It's chill mode. Like, when people say, oh, those Californians are laid back, they are, okay? And sometimes, you're, you're, when I said different change requires, sometimes your dream, it ain't in the laid back state no more. And the universe will give you, and you know, because when you move to the next place, you start saying, I am a different person in this different place. And I'm more of the person that I saw myself being when I was in this other place. If you could start putting, remember we talked about yesterday about putting things together. You said, mm, say it. That's right, Royal. If you could talk about, you got to put these things together. But I think that spirit was wanting to talk to me. Spirit was talking to me. All those times that I ate the cooked food and felt so horrible about it. What a thing to do to yourself. Don't ever do that to yourself. It's not necessary. It was the universe telling me, this is not necessary either. Not on this level. It's not necessary. So what I realize is, 
You have to, if, if you can't hear spirit, if nothing new is going on in your life, if you're holding on to something that may not be working for you anymore, then maybe it's time to move. God right, I said, stop, I love it. Maybe it's time to move. Maybe it's time to move. And whatever that means for you. But I know that I have a responsibility and I want to say, you know, I, I only, I'm always working on myself and I know I influence a lot of people. And if I could tell you what I would like to see for myself in 2017 and how I would further like to influence you, I really do want you to find your best you. I mean, I mean, healthy whole great relationship making your money moving as you want whatever i you need that we need you to be that we got too many oprahs that we love her we got too many ayalas and we love her we got what about you and everything you've learned everything you're learning everything you're about to learn is still a part of you so you expressing you is good for the planet. And I don't know if, not, if we all know how to do that. I don't want you to be obsessive. I, don't, I just want you to be African. I just want you to be yourself. I just want you to know what you know and believe in what you believe in, but continue to change and knowing what you know and believe in what you believe in. Be your African self. Go with nature, not against it. If something seems like it's not natural, don't let your rational mind tell you that it is. <laughs> Oma says classes. So Oma, if you're asking, you know I got the training course for six weeks. It starts the first Friday in January 2017. Blackberry Beauty Secrets, How to Glow and Flow from Head to Toe. It is a training course on what I do to stay this way to be this way, to, to evolve this way. What oils, what salts, what's the remedy? I love remedies, but a remedy is when you have a challenge. A remedy is when you have a problem. What, what I want for 2017, are you gonna, I want you to take my courses that ain't about the problem we're trying to fix for you. It's the thing you don't know so you can get to where you want to go. That's how I'm teaching. I'm assuming that you know who you are. I'm assuming that you love yourself. So I'm assuming that now you're coming to me to excel. You're, at a, you're standing at a place that's different than the place you were, and you're ready to go to the next level. So you're coming to my class to, to up level. That's what I want. I did the Wild Women Who Run With The Womb. That's why I got the whole program now for $99. You know, there's certain courses that I did for three hours my replays, which I definitely want you to take advantage of. And those are great. That's kind of where I'm going. But the, the six weeks gives you the spiritual, the mental, the physical. So it's more of this deep wisdom, but with some structure. So I, I, I want you to feel like, I, I need you to up-level yourself. I need you to come knowing that you are powerful, knowing you have strengths. May not know all of them, may not know how to use them yet, but very aware that you're going into a new place. Even though you didn't change your name, you are still a new person. And it's got to be a level, a level that you're thinking on, a level that you're living on, a level that you want to be on. You already there. It ain't that we trying and we're going to work on it and we're going to do. No, you, you pass some things. And so it's a way of, thank you, Cindy says, yes, ready to up level. Yes, it's a way of thinking and being. I, I personally, I don't have that much time. None of us do, I mean, to be going the slow route. If you if you close to fifty and some of us are on here or over, you you want to you ain't going to slow around anymore. What you need, you need it now. You needed it yesterday, but you take it now. And tomorrow, if that could be promised, you'll take that as well. So I I'm so what, why am I doing this? So I want to let you know what is this all about? We got like six more days of me doing these live streams. I feel like I'm it's a it's a prepping you. It's getting you to the level of how I teach, 
what I want for you, what I expect for you. I'm not saying even from you. I'm doing it to open your mind so when you get in the class, it's boom, boom, boom. I would say that I'm a wealth of information. No, we all are a wealth of information. Knowledge is infinite. So there's always more of it coming. But where does knowledge come from? From growth. Knowledge comes from growth. It's not enough not to know, know to not do something. It's better to know why you don't do that. Because you'll never do it again. So I'm coming from a different point and I know you're ready. And so I, I want to see that. Y'all, let me tell you my goal. That's why. And also the mastermind. $87 recurring payments. It is for the select few. I know that because I need to mastermind with you. So I'm going to put my, my master, our, my journey or my, my next big thing that my husband and I are working on is the building of the home. That's an incredible feat. But coming here where we are was an incredible feat. So there's going to be different things required. So in the mastermind groups, what I'm doing is I'm showing you how to push right over that finish line so you can get to that thing you want. And I'm and a young and we so we're all masterminding in, in a sense, it seems like it's an individual desire, but doing it together brings more power and makes it happen. I'm teaching a whole nother level. You know, I told you, I said to myself, I say, you don't get even caught up in the healer. Don't get caught up in being a coach. Don't get caught up in being a mentor. Don't get caught up in the words. Don't get caught up in the labeling of it. I mean, if there was a way that I could describe myself, it would not be a wrongful goddess, a womb priestess, a holistic practitioner. We know that. I let that go. It wouldn't even be a, a, a healer or a mentor or a coach, even though I'm doing that. It would be a teacher. That's what I am. I am a teacher. I teach what I know. And if you want to call it whatever that, if that health and wellness, that's fine. If that... Don't let people pigeonhole you. Don't let people put you in the box. But more importantly, don't put yourself in the box. You can't live in the box. You can't breathe in the box. You can't stretch out in the box. And you damn sure can't change in the box. So don't put yourself in the box. And don't allow other people to do it. I am a teacher. That's what I know. And that's what I do. When you set up challenges for yourself, if there's not tremendous growth within that challenge, lasting growth, then why have challenges? This is one of the, this is a challenge that I remember. My challenge was to come on every night. And I think I've been on it since I said, I think one night without every night. But I thought that I didn't know why. This is what I'm talking about spirit. And this is what I'm teaching in the Blackberry Beauty Secrets to follow your spirit. But I, it, there is a way to know how to do it. And there's things that we're going to do to open ourselves up to do it. But I didn't know that what was being revealed in these nightly talks with you is my true self. It was all for me. It was all for my growth to un a better understanding of who I am. I am a teacher. Who are you? It was a blessing. It's the multi-purpose. It's the and or both. It's the everything is everything. That's what happened. You get something, I get something. I've, I'm, I'm breaking seven years of doing something so strict. 16 years of doing Queen of Food with Sacred Woman. Seven years of being almost 100% raw foodist. I'm not doing those things those ways anymore. I'm still eating lots of raw. I still like things that I learned. But do you understand that 2017, I'm, if, I, if it sounds serious, take it seriously. You should be thinking on this level as well. How serious is your change? I'm not that those people anymore. Now, I don't know what I am now. <laughs> I think that's a good, safe place to be. I know I'm a teacher. That's the only thing that I know without a doubt. Where that takes me, where I go, I don't know. But I'm not, though, I don't need to be associated that way. And I'm okay. Because if you like what I'm bringing you, then you're going to keep coming. We have to evolve. So when was the last time you evolved? 
Seriously, I mean, that evolving where you stop doing something you did. Let me give you examples of ways that I've seen people evolve. Been married for 20 years. Everybody thought they were so happy. They divorced. That's evolution. Because nobody expects you after so long to, to do something different. Crystal says, I just invested in a 55-pound bag. Yes, I've seen so for my bags from the farmer's market. Total upgrade, baby. Absolutely, girl. Go ahead. Jacqueline says, wow, you can buy a 55-pound bag? Wow. Yes, and we're going to talk about other places to buy it, too, when you get into the, uh, the January intensive. Because I got a 50-pound 50, a 50 bag myself. Yes, ma'am, Miss Jackie, I said the same thing. That's right. I know that's right. We have to evolve. So, yeah, so when, when you, now you have to now just take this moment and really look at your life because a lot of you have truly evolved. And think about when was the last time you evolved. When I say evolved, when you just, you used to do something and you thought that was the way. And you've done it for so long and you've shocked yourself and others because you said, I don't want to do that in that way anymore. To me, that's evolving because you know why I say it's evolving? Most people, they don't change like that. Whether it work or not, it kind of works. It's what they know. It's what they've been doing. Most people are not going to change overnight or even change after 99 years like I did. <laughs> They're not going to do it because it's just not, not normal. It's a certain kind of person that can say, hmm, it's something I, I can, I'm, I, 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 like I said, with age should come wisdom. And maybe all of this that's coming is just natural wisdom. But I can't help but think that it's not that me also caught up in the energy. But the universe brought me here. Remember I tell you how you think you want something. You say I want this desire. No, the creator wants it for you. Because the creator knows what's ahead. The creator knows what you need. What I'm going to teach you in the next course is I'm preparing myself for the next chapter in my life as far as I can see. And my next chapter is going to Africa and doing some significant work there. So I'm preparing myself in diet, in, 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 in weight in a sense, in, in so many ways I'm preparing myself for what I say that I want. Uh, Barbara says, dang Crystal, I bought a 20 pound, pound bag and I thought I was balling, that's right. Doe says, hello everyone, hey sweetie. Jackie says, my mom used to say, if you live in this world long enough, you will get some wisdom. Thank you, my mom used to say it too. We're in, we're in Africa, you know what, I have a, a, a couple, the one that made the uh, spicy, tasty vegan book that many of the sisters that are on the call tonight, on the live stream tonight, bought uh, Gregory, uh, Joe Bledsoe, and Nasira Ajila, they're actually in the Gambia, and we've been invited to do some work, maybe in the next six months, so you know, we'll just see how everything goes, but it looks like the Gambia, this is going to be the first stop. I don't know how, I tell you, and that's what I'm teaching you. I don't always have all the details or how. I just go where spirit tells me to go. But I realize that spirit is, is, is moving us to another place. Guy says, very hard, needs tenacity and discipline, change, exactly. Yes, and you do. And sometimes, though, a lot of us, I'll tell you, guys, there's people like me that I, I think, oh, I'm so disciplined. But what are, your, what are you disciplined in? Some of us are disciplined in negativity. Some of us are disciplined in obsession. Some of us are disciplined in things that are not working for us. So I think everybody has discipline. Some people discipline to getting high every day, discipline to getting drunk every day, discipline in watching their, their once a week shows every week. Some of you are disciplined to gossiping, disciplined. So when you, let's look at discipline is a deep word. And so I'm saying, be, be, have people around you that can tell you what you're being disciplined to is not working for you anymore. You know, I think about this idea of even yoga. Like, I love yoga. Yoga is a beautiful thing. It's a stretching. But our ancestors, I remember my grandmother used to get up out the bed stretching. They knew about taking that walk every morning or evening. Or, you know, so, or, or, or having your, the, your grandfather rub their body down, like the massage that we pay for was something you got at the end of the day. Royal says, come to Senegal with me. I would love to send a Sydney Gambia. Senegal, yes, next to Gambia. That would be lovely. Uh, Jackie says, this is wonderful. Sounds like it's going to be a great trip. Yes. 
A rose says that's re that's religion to me, discipline itself. Yes, okay. And Andrina Phillips just joined. So, I, what I would like you to do for the next few days, because we that's what we have. We have uh, next few days until the year ends. Go into that deep reflection, the contemplation that I say I see a lot in California. There is a time to contemplate. And it's this time that we're in right now. It's the winter solstice. It's that going deep within. It's that contemplation time. So Chandra says, greetings from London. Hey, thanks for the lovely message. Insight to start the day with. Oh, you're so welcome. Guyretta says, yes. So I want you to take the time and I want you to see this new year in ways that you've never seen it before. And start being, and we're going to really learn a lot about being ourselves and being honest that there's no, there's no contradictions in the way you want to live your life. And you have to live it for you. So remember, y'all, tonight the specials are on the website. It's going to be drastically reduced, many of the programs. So go there, scratching the scalp. That's right. Jackie said, I wish I could go with you, but I know I'm not ready yet. I have to get the first mango first and begin it now as well as in 2017. Yes, honey, lots of things and lots of places to go, so no worries at all. And Omar said, submerged. Yes, scratching the scalp. Yes, I love it. So y'all, if you're interested, I'm going to have some products on the, on the website. If you want to just kind of delve and see what's on there, it's www.the, that's T-H-E, blackberrybeauty.com. It'll start midnight tonight. It goes to midnight tomorrow. So all day, all night, feel free to purchase something on the website. Penny says, do you have any upcoming retreats? Actually, you know what? I, 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 Yes, <laughs> there's actually something coming up in January. I'm going to be doing something at the Aloft Hotel with LaShonda Henry, and I'll invite, I'll, I'll announce that tomorrow. So there is some upcoming things. And Jackie says, I know I have to do this work, Lisa Marie. I will get it done. Well, we're going to get it done together. So ladies, I am going to go back with my honey, and we're going to have us. Thank you, Crystal, for putting the website down there. I appreciate that. And a sisterhood program, that's the Black Beard, that's the spiritual awakening of the black woman. It is still on the site for $99. Are you asking, is it going to be a little less? I'm not sure. Let me go see. So anyway, I'm going to go to the website. I'm going to reduce some things. It starts at midnight, but it might be up there earlier for you early birds that want to get on tonight. If not, all day tomorrow. I will come in tomorrow. I'll come in for a short time, maybe during the day to say hi, do a live stream. But of course the evening, you know, we're all gonna be spending with our families and I will see you sometime tomorrow. And I hope that you find something on the website that's good for you. And I love you all with all my heart. This is Lisa Marie Goodson of the Blackberry Beauty Transformative Academy, ancient African wisdom for the modern sister. Peace and blessings.